the, the phrase that Boris Johnson used about the Chequers Green, polishing a turd, right? So you you take what you <laughs> said was completely unacceptable and then you put a bit of extra language on it um, and and then, you know, you, you claim victory. So that, that's what's happening, I think. You, you, you map the difference, of course, between reality and, and, and reportage. So Johnson's challenge yeah. now is to try to sell as a success what is clearly a, 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 a huge concession a huge climb down which makes me wonder especially now i mean I, we were doing it live on air my colleague theo osherwood and i uh, talking about this as being different from what theresa may did because there's no way they would have announced this agreement unless he was confident of getting the votes through parliament which made us presume that the dup had blinked or, or, or been offered some irresistible inducement and then while well, we're actually picking over the bones of the agreement the dup reveal that they haven't agreed with it at all which makes it very difficult to see how it's going to get through parliament i hesitate to ask you this but is there a is there a secret master plan in play do you think that hasn't become completely clear yet <laughs> You know, I think you know we've all been asking that question for the last three years. Haven't we? You <laughs> we know, have, there yeah. must be more to this than meets the eye. You know, there, it, 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 it can't be quite as dumb as it seems. There must there must be something else going on here. Um, I, it, it 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 seems clear, and I think you're absolutely right. Like, I, I think I made the same assumption, and I think everybody else made the same assumption when we heard, "Okay, a deal has been done. Mm-hmm. The DUP must have been squared." But for the reasons that you've just been talking about, the DUP has not been squared. The, the, the DUP is has kind of painted itself into a, a really a terrible corner. You know, it it it, it conceded. If you, so if you remember, it's often hard to remember even two weeks ago, but, you know, Johnson's initial proposal was this kind of weird version of the two borders. Right? So you're going to have the, as it were, the single market border in the Irish Sea, and then you're going to have the customs border in, on the island of Ireland. Um, and the DUP sort of accepted that, which, which to me was inexplicable. Yes. I, I couldn't understand why they were accepting the principle that Northern Ireland would be fundamentally different from the rest of the UK, but then not solving the problem. So they, they, they kind of caught themselves in something that really just doesn't make any sense. But having done that, it's, it's, it's very difficult for them to sell to their constituency the idea that they have protected the union. Uh, you know, they, they quite rightly say that this arrangement weakens the union. Absolutely, it does. But it does so for the more fundamental reason, which is that Brexit weakens the union. You know, there is no form of Brexit that that doesn't make the future of the United Kingdom uh, one that uh, you know that 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 very large call of doubt is cast over. And and so uh, the DUP has no strategic sense in all of this of, you know, w- w- where is the where is the interest here for those of, who are unionists? And, you know, unionism is a perfectly legitimate, valid expression of a political identity in Northern Ireland. Whether you agree with it or you don't, one would like to see it being led in a way that had some kind of strategic direction. But, but they've kind of got themselves into this situation, really, where, of course, they didn't think Brexit was going to happen. They thought they could just wave the flag. It was going to be a bit of recreational Britishness. Um, and then it would all be over. And, and uh, you know, they're, they're now stuck in a situation where they either have to be the last standout that, that, that prevents Johnson from, from getting his deal, uh, or they have to crumble and concede on the Northern Ireland only backstop, which undoubtedly does, in its long-term implications, point towards a greater and greater separation of Northern Ireland from, from the rest of the UK. Well, my, I mean, you lay it out so neatly, uh, I, I would find it hard to imagine them supporting this then, because the raison d'etre is the retention of closest possible links with the rest of the United Kingdom. But what do you, I mean, I hesitate to ask you which side you'd put your money on, but I'm going to. Well, what do you think they're going to do? I think their instinct is always to say no. I mean, you have to remember that their, their, their DNA, you know, is rejectionism. You know, their, 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 their history lies in trying to bring down the first kind of reforming prime minister in Northern Ireland in, in the mid-1960s, Terence O'Neill, who was trying to do some actually very mild reforms to appease the Catholic community. That's where the DUP came from. That's where Ian Paisley, who was its, its founder, you know, gained his first political traction. They spent the entire period of the Troubles saying no to and bringing down any attempt at reconciliation, at, at you know, power sharing. Uh, they, of course, oppose the Belfast Agreement. And this is a really important thing mm. to, to keep in mind. 
Um, Although S- Sammy Wilson was waxing lyrical about how important it is yesterday on social media. I know, media. I know. It's, it's kind of wonderful that, that they discovered it now, you know, uh, when, it, when it seems to suit them. Um, but, 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 you know, they're, they're, so they're, their instinct is say no to everything. Um, don't take ownership of anything. Don't take responsibility for, for the compromises that have to be made in order for politics in Ireland, but in the UK and on, on the whole to work. So my, my, my bet would be that they, they will end up with a kind of rejectionist position. However, they're going to come under enormous pressure from business uh, in, in Northern Ireland, from the farming community, you know, from a lot of their own natural supporters who are saying the alternative to this is going to be a no-deal Brexit. So what's going to be really fascinating is uh, how, how this plays out, right? So, so I, I think initially they will not support the, the deal if Johnson tries to put it forward on Saturday. And then they'll come under extraordinary pressure, I think, um, in, in the period between, between now and October 31st because uh, you know, they, they'll be faced with, with, with um, this sort of doomsday scenario whereby they are seen to be responsible for no deal. If they're seen to be responsible for no deal with all the catastrophic consequences for their own community in Northern Ireland, uh, then I think it's an existential question for them, you know, as a, to, 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 to how they can survive that.